250 profit. Not too shabby for not really doing much. Maybe bringing some coffee and getting the jobs. Hey, what is up, everybody? We're gonna do a little day in the life, a little hustler's lifestyle right now. So it actually is around 12 o'clock. I actually just started my day a little earlier and we got a couple of things done so far. You guys know I have a software company. Right now I'm hiring an organic outreach team. And what we already did this morning is I hired somebody else to help me train this organic outreach team. But more to talk about that soon. I'll probably talk about that in the car. What we actually have to do is we have to address a couple of estimates first. All right, we have a guy that needs their deck either pressure washed and stained. And I also want to check out this other house. So I think we can make a nice flip on this. So guys, stay with me. Today's going to be pretty busy. We got a Valify meeting as well, guys. Got to make some moves over there. Stay with me. This is about to be fun. We're out there and the birds are screaming at me. But uh, let's get to work, baby. <laughs> so let me give you a little cool thing about me is I like doing the least amount of work as possible, as you guys might already know. I don't like doing estimates, either, to be honest. But the problem is it's hard to find a manager that you can trust to do these estimates for you. So right now I'm in the stage trying to find somebody I can trust. And I'm in the stage where I kind of need to do the estimates myself, get the prices, get everything situated, and then have my guys handle the jobs, okay? So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to a certain street. We're gonna check out the job. I'm probably gonna show you guys what's going on in this job. And I'll show you how I price it. One other thing is, like I said, I'm lazy AF. <laughs> I'm so lazy, guy, and I think that's the right way to do it. You know, work smart rather than harm. So what I was doing this morning is our Funnel Hacker Labs. I'm trying to build, like I said, an organic outreach team, guys. I'm trying to build a team that can handle my selling for Funnel Hacker Labs. I want to team, build a team of solid, like five, 10 people to be able to reach out, cold reach out to other marketing agencies and help me promote my Funnel Hacker Labs software. But the thing is about me, you guys know me. I'm lazy. <laughs> Yo boy, lazy. He'd rather work smart than work hard. So what I'm doing right now, like I said, this morning I spent all morning trying to find this one agency that they specifically specialize in training other teams to do this organic outreach. So what I think I did is I think I found the, the right match. It's this, it's this lady from the Philippines that is going to, I'm gonna pay him literally 400 bucks Per person that they train so I put a deposit down I'm gonna put a deposit down probably today uh, right to get back from here I'm gonna put a deposit down on this person because I think I like what she's been saying put a deposit down on this person for 200 bucks I'm gonna have them train one of my, my girls okay so she can start organically outreaching the people and start making some sales for me hopefully it works if not no worries it's only 400 bucks mainly is that I don't want to have to spend the time sitting with this person, hopping on Zoom calls, talking to this person, figuring out what's wrong, what she needs to do better. I don't want to do that. And if I can pay somebody 400 bucks to get that headache out of my face, to get that headache out of my life, and potentially make a couple sales, yo, I think that shit worth it. <laughs> All right, so guys, enough rant. Let me get, back to, let me get to app. Let me get to Osprey Court, and I'll get pick up. All right, here's the place over here. This is the house we're doing some work at. They want to stain that deck. They might have one in the back as well. Well, we're gonna find out. I don't think anybody's here yet. Last time she texted me, she told me that she was going to buy some paint. So I'm gonna park her over here. My buddy's about to meet me here. Let me move in here so people have some space. Looks like they just did this gravel actually too. Here she is, sweet. We got my buddy over here, Steven, right over here. He's gonna be the one doing all the work here. So it's not really too big of a job. It's gonna be a three day process. We got over here, let me turn this around. All right, so we got over here is this big deck over here. It's gonna be a little complicated because it's gonna be hard to pressure wash and paint because you gotta move everything on here inside. But realistically, what they want us to do in here, they want us to pressure wash inside here. Over here on the deck, pressure wash the deck. Well, first come over here, putty this up. I'm thinking maybe sand this up a little first. Then what they did over here is they putty it over here. So it's gonna be taking another day. So one day is gonna be sanding and puttying. Next day, come back pressure wash all this stuff off and then third day is just painting so let me take you around here guys show you what you got not too bad we're lucky because we don't have to do the underside of this usually when we do it's just a headache all right 
Uh, deck's not too bad. They got this like black mold over here, but I'm pretty sure the pressure washer can get that stuff off. Then we got the back side over hither. We gotta do this side of the deck too. Smaller side of the deck, same thing. We're gonna come here with the ladder. We're gonna putty that side, sand that, maybe putty if we have to. And then next day, come back, pressure wash, next day, come back and paint. Not too bad. But this is the, this is the quick job over here. And we're probably going to be going to be discussing this. We're gonna come up with a couple of prices for this person. We're gonna give back to her. And she said we can start as early as tomorrow if we can negotiate a price. What I'm gonna do today, get back, run some numbers, uh, call, give her a quick call, give her some prices, and get this party started. I'll show you the next house, guys. Next stop over here, we have another house that when we do a nice flip over. So stay tuned. All right, all right, all right, all right. So guys, what happened is we just gave some prices. We quoted them for around 900 bucks. Did everything. I think it's a three day process. How it's gonna be is my boy over here, I'm gonna give him around 650 for it and I'm gonna keep the rest. So that's for me. What is that? Seven, eight, nine, 250 profit. Not too shabby for not really doing much. Maybe bringing some coffee and getting the jobs, you know? All right, so that's what we're doing. What I'm gonna be doing is that tomorrow, he's gonna start work here at 9 a.m. And you know me, <laughs> I'm freaking lazy. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm driving to my place, go to the garage, I'm gonna give him all the tools so he doesn't have to wake me up in the a.m. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna give him the tools right now. Uh, then we're going to head to that special spot where I think we can do a nice, sexy flip. I'll show you guys that place in a minute. It's crazy because it's 2.15, I have a meeting with Valify, you know, the Crypto Passive Income Project. That's going to change the freaking game at 3. So I kind of had a rush. I got like 45 minutes here. But I do want to check out this place. I actually did want to... Actually, 3.30, so I do have some time. The thing about this place is that it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Right by the water. It has a sexy view. Just needs landscaping is what I'm thinking. And a dumpster to throw out everything inside the house. So the thing about this place is I was asking the neighbors, is it's a beautiful house. Neighbors said the dude hasn't been there for like around five years. So this place is abandoned. What I'm thinking of what we can do with this place is we can get this place, we can get it under, figure out who the owners are, send them an email, send them a letter, give them an offer, get it under a contract, flip it to a real estate agent, make maybe a quick five, 10 Gs off of that by being that middleman that finds them the place. Because realistically, I live in this community, it's called Hemlock, it's in the Poconos. And right now, this place is popping, okay? Everybody is moving over from like Jersey and New York to trying to get safe from this corona and all this stuff that's going on. All this uncertainty is having people move out of New York City. And the fact that New York City is, is to be honest, I'm gonna be real here. I think New York City is kind of dying. These people are realizing that you don't need to go into work to actually work. People are realizing that you can work from your laptop you're perfectly fine. So what a lot of people is happening is here realizing they don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on housing in New York City anymore. So what people are doing is they're moving from New York City, New Jersey, more towards the Poconos because they feel like it's more safe, more secluded, and they know that they can make a full-time living from the house. So communities like this, like Hamlock Farms, you know, these places are popping, bro, popping. All houses are here, all houses here are sold, okay? This is 80 miles of road. And originally, before coronavirus happened, they had 80 houses for sale. Now I think they got like 10 houses for sale, probably even less than that, okay? What I'm trying to say is that houses, little gems in these little communities here, like the gems of communities where they have three beaches, they have a pool here. I mean, yeah, they do have HOA, but these places and these houses they get sold so quickly. If you have a nice place over here in Hemla, you know, some Brooklynite or some Russian over here that pay cash will scoop that up in a heartbeat. So what I'm thinking is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check out this place. I'll show you guys to give you a little view of it. I'm gonna get some more gather some more intel on it on who exactly owns this place. And I think I can do that by going over to the local real estate agents or just doing some recon, you know me, I know everybody here. <laughs> Go maybe to the uh, the office is here and figure out who owns that house. From there, I'll write the person a letter, shoot them over an offer, and see how we can move forward from there. I mean, even it's always worth a shot, you know? That's how I, I feel, feel things. Like, if you're not taking a shot, guys, you're not gonna succeed. You're not gonna, you know, how, how are you gonna win? As a cop over here, bring this down over here. But if you're not taking a shot, like, you're not gonna win. <laughs> you miss every shot you don't take. So, it's worth going over doing some recon trying to figure out who owns this place 
and hopefully trying to make some moves. I do have a couple of real estate agents that are my, some really good buddies of mine that I know for, for a fact that can sell this place. But like I said, I'll show you the place and you're gonna, you're gonna know, you're immediately gonna know. All I really need is some landscape and open up that view. But I'll show you guys in a second. All right, I gotta help this guy load some stuff into his to his whip right now. And I'll meet you at the spot. Talk to you guys soon. All right, guys, so we're heading over to this house right now, Bob. Let me give you some alpha advice. Let me break some down to you. Today, I have two people that owe me money. The one is a consulting fee. I already actually did the consulting, but the dude said he was transferring the money over. I mean, I trust him. I, no, I have no doubt that he's going to pay me. I have another guy that owes me another monthly income uh, payment for the CRM plus course. Because I sell this credit repair course that in it has a CRM to systematize your entire credit repair business. And I also have this training. So instead of him paying me $9.97, he made three payments of two three sixty, dollars And he owes me the last payment today. I was talking to him last week. He says that I made him make the payment this week. So two people owe me. One for three sixty, dollars one for 300 bucks. Okay? And I want to talk to you about the best way of getting that back to you getting that back in your hands because you don't want to be too pushy with that because i feel like what i don't feel like is well if somebody was like yo pay me pay me fuck you pay me fuck you, pay me that's not gonna really work they're gonna just get pissed off or never use your service again so i need a easy going way to get this money back in my pocket without losing his business okay and the easiest way is to just be polite about it actually to be polite about it yeah but to advise rather than request or tell them to do something. So the way I do this is, we were, for the consulting one guy, let me give you an example here. For the consulting guy, I was teaching him how to do, how to get more referrals. And I was giving him the suggestion that I'm not gonna give you on here. If you want it, you can probably check out my YouTube videos for how to get more referrals. But pretty much what I, what I texted him this morning, I was following up with him, I was like, oh, how to go, how did that system go with the referral process, how to go, uh, what step are you on? And can I help you any further? I was, we were also teaching him how to do Facebook ads during the consulting session. So I was telling him today, like, how are the ads? Are they performing? Are they up now? Because the reason why I'm doing that is I'm showing concern and I'm showing him that I'm not only chasing a check, okay? I'm specifically asking him that, listen, if you need more help, if you need more advice, let me know. I'm hugely invested in your business, okay? Because realistically, first, my reputation online. Second is he needs money, okay? That's how he gets paid so he can pay me. So I'm showing him that I'm mutually invested in his business so that he'll feel more comfortable paying me. Because if I put myself in his shoes, if somebody was like, yo, you owe me money, you owe me money. It's, I, I don't, this automatic reaction is like, yo, I, He's kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know if I really want to pay him. But if you show that you're mutually invested, that you're interested in him succeeding, they're going to be a lot more willing to pay you. So the way I'm combating this, the way I'm responding to this guy, the way I'm bringing this guy to actually get do some action and pay me, is by instead advising him on the next steps. Instead helping him. Instead of being more of a consultant, showing what he needs to do next, what he's missing, or something like that, for him to realize that this guy goes out of his way to help me and if this guy's gonna continue to go out of his way to help me i want him to be happy for him to continue to go out of his way that's a consulting guy as we're passing up here but let me talk to you about the other guy that owes me money the other guy that owes money he owes me 360 for this crm plus course is the monthly payment so let me tell you about him how i'm gonna get the money back from him so what i did was I advised him, I asked him, yo, how is it going? How's the next steps? As soon as he responds to that, I'm going to ask him, uh, I'm going to ask him what he needs to do next, what he needs next. Once again, more of advising. And through advising, by providing with value, 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 then I'm going to slip in, hey, by the way, do you have the cash now? Because he said he's going to pay me sometime this week. Or not say, by the way, you, do you have the cash now? I'm going to say, hey, when do you think you're going to pay me the other 360 by the way? I'm going to slip it in through advising him. I'm not going to be just like, yo, pay me the money. You know, because nobody likes to hearing that. What I'm trying to say is provide value and the money will come. 
right, well, we're pulling up to this house right now. So give me a second. I'll show you the place. So this is the house I was checking out. And as you can see, it's flooded by greenery. From over the street, you can't even see the house. But if you go over here, you can see that, to be honest, I just think it needs some more landscaping and it might just be a quick flip. I was talking to the neighbors over there yesterday about it and they haven't seen this guy come here in years. He's had like five years. So, I think this could be a potential. Yeah, it does have, it's kind of broken down and I can't really see inside of it. But this house has some potential, you know? I mean, yeah, it's kind of right behind someone's back house over here. There's a crowd over here. Um, definitely, you know, big dumps to get rid of all this stuff. But realistically, did you get rid of all this stuff? Landscaping, I don't know what the interior is like. I'm only assuming it's not good because look at all of that. But I don't think there's any mold. I don't want to step in here, it's not my place. But this could be a nice flip. Usually, I'm thinking metal roof, even better. Come on now. Oh, so no problems with the roof, nothing's concaving in there. You know, obviously, the deck needs to be pressure washed. Doesn't need to be redone. Press wash and stain, I'm thinking. Landscaping. Fix those things. Get rid of this shit. And this has potential. I can't really see in there. It's closed. But I think this actually has some potential over here. Okay. Yeah, let's see. test it out. See if the water's running. Nope, no water. So nobody's living here, obviously. Or maybe it's just winterized. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try to figure out who owns this place. Is the meter running? Meter's not running. Oh, is it? Oh, it is running, okay. But it doesn't have any electric, it doesn't look like it. No, no, meter's not running, Never mind. <laughs> meter's not running. I mean, I do have to fix up a couple of things here. <laughs> but right now, I mean, I can't see the inside. I have a feeling that the inside's not going to look too bad. Because so everything's kind of locked up tight. Metal roof. The roof is good. I wish I could see inside a little better. The inside looks good. It just looks like a bunch of sh shit in there. I don't know. You can't really see that, but... But yeah, this has potential. I think just... Good old landscaping. Oh, this guy's cutting the grass over here. Let me talk to this guy actually, real quick. The neighborhood landscaping over here, that's, that's kinda cool. I mean, something really cool about cutting the grass of your neighbors. I know it's a very nice thing to do. It's absolutely a really nice thing to do. But let me tell you something really cool that I learned about doing about that. Is that when you, if you're a landscaper, where's this guy? Is that if you're a landscaper and you go out of your way to do something for free for your neighbor, usually they'll give you more jobs. Let me make an example. When I was doing work myself, as in I was actually doing it, I was doing the cutting the grass and stuff, you know? When I was doing that, I would cut my neighbor's lawn. Every now and then, I like weed whack or something like that. The lawn. The main reason is, is because when I did that, very next day, they're like, oh, we actually need some pressure washing. Can you hook me up there? So you're good at cutting the grass. You know, so, so even the slightest things, you help going every way, helping people, it can make a difference in the long run because they'll give you bigger jobs because they trust you or because they. Because they did, because you did something for free, they feel obligated to give you a job. Because as soon as I cut their grass, they would always offer me forty bucks, and I'd be like, "No, nah, it's okay. I don't need it. I don't, I'm not that. I'm not that down bad." So they would offer me money, but I would, I would deny it. 
and literally the very next day we're like blade they're knocking my door blade can you pressure wash my house i'll charge them like six seven hundred bucks to pressure wash the house all right so in the long run it'd be worth it because <laughs> they'd be pressure washing the house like three times a year okay that's what i'm trying to say so i got this address here what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a little recon at 241 i gotta meet up with my valify crew at 330 so i'm gonna do a little recon here and see if i can figure out who lives in that house so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to this main office in hemlock and i'm also going to go to the real estate main real estate people here whatever it's called well actually first i'm gonna go to the main office in hemlock see if i can figure out who lives there second collect source is my realtor buddy over here see if they know and then from there online but the office is right here so i'm gonna check it out real quick i'll be back guys so i just did a little recon over here at the office so we live in pike county by the way so i was at the office the, the lady said that they can't really give me too many details which i guess makes sense but she was able to tell me that the house is in good standing the dude's up on all their bills they paid everything they're good so obviously there's somebody that lives there so the next step is to go to this website called pike county appraisal let me put my web my seatbelt on because it's probably very annoying all right and it's safety too yeah absolutely <laughs> but yeah so they so i'm gonna go head home i'm gonna go to the site called pike county appraisal you live in pike county and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a little research on it i'm gonna try to figure out exactly who owns a place this way i can send them out a message so i'll see you soon i'm getting a call right now so i'll see you soon guys so look at this I was looking at this property, 151 Hillside Drive, that's where it is. Um, they don't really have pictures on it at all, but that's the house. So I went over to Property Shark, made a quick free account. I'm finding their names over here, and I already found where they live. Purchase price was 35 G's. And they purchased it, when I clicked on that name, they purchased it. I'm going to take that address. I'm going to write them a L-O-I, a letter of intent, okay? Pretty much telling them, hey, that I saw this property you have. It's kind of run down. Uh, we would like to buy it, okay? And maybe give them a price. I'm going to call my realtor buddy and see if what type of price that we should be able to offer them. And let's see if we can get them into a contract or some sort of thing. Or maybe I'm part of putting this letter and say, hey, do you even guys, are you guys even interested in buying this? Okay. And I'm interested in selling it, knowing that these guys haven't been here in a while. Uh, but these guys are from Brooklyn. Um, I'm sure these people are interested in making some money. Online on Zillow says the place is worth 186. Really don't think so. If we can get this for like 80, 80. Clean up the front, pressure wash, get rid of all the stuff in there. Then you can sell it for 200. But yeah, guys, there's a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet. Mmm, baby, looks good. All right, so I'm, like I said, I'm gonna write this LOI, send it out to them, and see if we can make some deals happen, guys. Uh, 3.30, I have to hop on another meeting, so it's 3.17 right now, Three, so I'm going to try to work on this till th around 3.30, and at 3.30, I'm going to hop on a meeting with Valify, where we're going to talk about our next moves to help, uh, we got to talk about promotion, we got to talk about some marketing, we got to talk about a couple of announcements, a couple of big things that happened over at Valify, so stay tuned for that, guys. Okay, so currently I'm in a meeting with Valify, but what I actually did was I was able to make a letter of interest. I know I said before, letter of intent, but there's a difference. So the letter of intent, I'll explain that in a second, but pretty much what this says is, hey, hello, my name is Nathaniel Blade Toronto. I'm a local Hemlock Farms member. They recently passed by your house. I'm interested in, uh, I'm interested in purchasing this. Please consider my offer seriously. Get back to me at my phone number. So now the, the reason why I use a letter of interest rather than a letter of intent, a letter of intent pretty much states that I want to buy the house and gives a price, whereas a letter of interest says, hey, I'm interested. Let's talk about it. Let's negotiate. So the reason why I did that is because I don't want to have something binding saying, hey, I have to buy this because I gave them a price. I do have a price in my mind that I do want to buy this house. at. If I were to buy it, I do have a price for that. And I do have a price of what my realtor would probably pay for this house. But like I said, the way I want to go about it is two ways. Either one or two ways. 
I get it cheap enough that I actually can buy it and I can do the flip myself. Or well, what I would like to probably do, which I think, well, I know would be a lot better, is wholesale it and do the work myself. Wholesale as in I get the thing, the house under contract, give it to my realtor buddy, they put out the money, they put out the cost and fees for buying the house, closing, and the fixes, and they get it dedicated to my other guy that actually promotes it to sell it. Whereas I find, I'm the middleman. I find the house, I give it to them, they give me five or 10 Gs to because of the deal that I was able to get with them. And then I have the people that are actually able to fix the house as well. So you guys know I have a bunch of contractors. So what I would do is after, after getting the house closed is I would give these people, my contractors, kind of middleman slash manage the job of the fixings of the house, of the property. It's just a lot of landscaping, pressure washing, but I would actually manage the fixing of the house for that person, okay? In addition to them giving that five grand up front for the actual finding the house for them, addition that and middleman the contracting job is what I'm trying to say. So that's how I want to take it from there. So I have this letter here. I'm going to handwrite the address on it and handwrite their name on it so that it increases the rate of them actually opening it. And I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to print it out, and I'm going to send this to the people and see what we can make happen, right? I'll probably let you know what happens with that later on a later day because it's going to take, it's not going to be an instant thing. It's not how it works. You know, I have to send this out. It takes like five, seven days to go to them. They have to send something back to me. I put on there my phone number so they can actually text me or call me if they want to, or they might just send me a letter back. But yeah, guys, uh, that simple. All right. Now I got to get back to my meeting over here with Velify. We're just working with some DevOps right now. So we're trying to fix some problems that we're having uh, with development. And we're going to be going through a bunch of different things that are kind of confidential, can't really get into in this video. But I'm probably going to close off this video here. All right, I guess we're continuing. Got the letter, as you can see, I handwritten it. It's backwards, I know. But handwrite it because it increases open rates. Right now, I'm about to go ship it out. And after that, we're going to go to the gym because, you know, when you're stressed, you gotta work out, all right? It just helps you focus up, helps you, it just helps a whole lot. Isn't working out great? Yeah. Working out's fantastic. So we're gonna do that later, right? See you guys there. What I'm trying to say is not to underestimate a good workout. Don't underestimate a good night of sleep. Don't, don't underestimate that stuff. You need that. You need those things. I'm gonna go work out. I'm not gonna make this type of video we're gonna watch you work out. I'm sure you guys can watch other YouTubes for that. But see you guys soon. No, seriously. Real shit. Why do we work out? Why do we work out? Let me tell you. Let me tell you why we work out. All right. One of my main purposes why we work out. First, stress, obviously. You need something to de-stress where you don't have to think about just freaking working and gaining that moolah. You need it in your life. Second thing, you got to be in tippy-top peak shape. You got to be an apex predator. You got to be in shape, though. Seriously. Because if you're running around trying to make that money, yo, it's not only your mind that needs to be in shape. You gotta be in shape. It's so gosh darn important, guys. All right? I'm the type of guy that's constantly running around, constantly running back and forth. I personally need to be in shape for that. But even better is that the more shape that you're in, the better you can think. And I wholeheartedly fully believe that. The more shape you're in, the better you can perform, okay? And, yo, if you're like me, you're trying to become a billionaire. And I don't see becoming a billionaire as, I mean, it's, I'm probably wrong, there's probably a lot of people, but chances of becoming a billionaire, chances are if you're a billionaire, you gotta be in somewhat of shape because you need energy. Okay, you need to be energy, you need to be energetic, you need to be enthusiastic. Most people that I know that don't work out, I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of sitting on their ass on the couch, depressed as SHIT. I'm not gonna lie to you. you if you want to become rich, a billionaire, you can't be sitting on the couch all the time, watching TV, playing video games, smoking weed. You can't, it's not gonna work. If you really want to get to where you want to be, your body needs to be at an all-time shape and needs to be good i'm not saying i'm the strongest man alive no i mainly do a lot of calisthenics to keep myself active to keep myself functioning to keep myself energetic and to keep myself at the ability at peak level so that i can actually perform you know i 
A lot of people rely on me. All right, and it's crazy. I'm only 23, and I'm saying that. A lot of people do rely on me to be able to perform. So I'm not gonna risk myself getting injured, slowing down, being sluggish, being tired by not working out. What I'm trying to say, guys, is don't under. All right. So now we're at the gym. I'm trying to increase my dumbbell bench or incline bench. So the way I'm doing it is I'm doing like super set of three. Heaviest weight, medium, and light. I'm gonna hit three sets of these, I'm going to do something else. But guys, let me know if you like the style of video where you see a light, uh, my, where you pretty much come into my life and see what I'm doing, how to hustle, you know? Let me know if you like this type of video. If so, I'll keep on making it, all right? So I'm probably gonna sign off for now. I'll talk to you later. I actually do have a couple more hustles this tonight that I might bring you in with. But as of right now, I'm going to sign off. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.